remember last week when we were doing the the cash journals questions uh one of the strategies that i gave you was when you're given a transaction you need to look at the first thing that you must look at the required part the second part is you go into that specific transactions and highlight the keywords so that you will be able to identify where does it go based on the required okay so here uh, there's a question we are given a questions and the required says that disclose the adjustment journal and its transfer possible ledger accounts and shows and shows in which part of the financial statement to be so when you show a transaction that it goes to which part of this the financial statement if it's an income statement you just write p and l and then if it's a balance sheet account you just say sfp right then that tells me that you know that this transaction goes through to my journal or the balance sheet or the profit and loss account okay so that if you are required to do the income thing then you know okay it's a credit loss then i have to adjust it and we will meet you through to uh, what do you call it the statement of profit and losses and expense but my adjustment question says that Putty Limited has the following accounts transactions to be adjusted and recorded accordingly with, with the year and the 31st December 20, sorry, 31st December 20, uh, 2022. So that tells you that we're given the year end. It means that our year, uh, the beginning of the year is the 1st of January 2022. So that's full 12 months period. Transaction number one says that I need to work with you on this one. Transaction number one says that we've got an insurance premium that has been overpaid with an amount of 800 rand for January and February. I think we did this in the class before, but what we're looking for now is to redo the whole thing, including the adjustment channels. Okay. So the, I'm going to go through each and every question, so I'll, I'll try to take a look with you as well. Number two says that on a closer examination, it was a slightly that Putin limited water and lights accounts is not paid for September to December in the current year with an amount of 1,800 rand. Okay. And number three says that on the 31st of December 2022, Putin limited account shows that inventory worth of 12,000 rand was purchased during the current period. And then on a closer examination, again, it was determined that 1,000 of inventory is still on hand. Right. And then transaction number four says that Putin Limited rental income shows an amount of 18,000 rent as they rented a part of the building to board SA for its administration. Okay. And then transaction number four says that Putin Limited commission income showed an amount of 1,600 rent and it was determined that December amount has not yet been received with an amount of 400 rent. So Stewart Buckster is one of Putin Limited client and he was closely determined to be insolvent. Current is all booty limited in amount of 350 rand. So number seven says that the asset vehicle owned by Putty Limited had a depreciation amount of 15,000 rand for the current year. We did this just now. Now I'm going to go back again here. It says that disclose the adjustment journals and its transfers, possible ledger accounts, and show shows it in which part of the financial statement should be disclosed. Right, we're going to unpack each and every question individually so, and then we'll just do it as per the required part and we'll move to the next one, the next one, the next one, until we are actually done. So as soon as we are done with this, I'm going to be open up for questions. And then if there are no questions, if there are questions after the questions, then we close them and then we're looking forward towards Saturday. Okay, and then I'll be able to tell you what are we doing on Saturday. All right, transaction number one, insurance premium has has been overpaid with an amount of 800 rand for January and February. How do you record these transactions according to this, the required part? Let's unpack it. Uh, we'll do this. Is my edit part. Okay, it's a... Uh, it's a payment, right? I'm sure you'd agree with me that it's a prepayment. Uh, the PIP payment is an account that falls within the statement of financial position. It's a balance sheet item. And uh, okay, this is just the identity, and then we're going to look at uh, the recording part. Look at the recording. 
Uh, Kayla, can you help me on how you're going to record this? Okay, so if it's an overpayment, that would mean a result of paying towards the future month, but deducting from the current month of the payment. All right, come again, please. So I didn't get the part. You know, I oh, know that's not a problem. I was saying that we would need to carry the amount over to the future month if that was a payment such as water, electricity, or an insurance payment. We could carry that over as an equity to the future month. Okay. But I don't know what else we would do. Okay, that's fine. Thank you so much, Kayla, for that uh, partaking. So I was going to say, I don't know if I'm actually correct by doing this, but um, what we have collected basically as um, prepayments, uh, a figure that we would have been given for prepayments for the year, we subtract the, the prepayment because um, that would have actually been paid this year, but it's for the future. Um, it's for the future years. Yeah, so it will be taken off. Okay. So your recording part, of, how would your recording part look like? For the recording part, if I may say. Is it Christelle? Yes. Okay, let's go ahead, please, Christelle. Since it's a prepayment, um, the debit will have the prepayment account. Yes. And the credit will be insurance and the amount will come get right. Come again. Uh, let, me just, let me just record that. Give, give it again. On the debit side, this is debit just side. the first, uh, the adjustment entry. Yes. So the debit side will be prepayment. Prepayment. And the credit side will be insurance, the insurance account. Will be insurance. And the amount will be 800. The amount will be 800. Both sides, okay. So yeah, I think I mean. Because okay. if I understand, the insurance account has to reduce because there was an overpayment. That's why it was a credit side. Because normally it's an expense account. Yes. Am I right? That's very correct. That's very, very correct. That's, and that's just more... the adjustment part. Okay. That's the adjustment part. Thank you so much, uh, Tembi. Sorry, Christelle. Uh, adjustments. You nailed it on uh, on the head. All right. So tell me, uh, give me your closing transfer. The closing, closing transfer is. Uh, we are just going to close it off to the profit and loss account. So the insurance account will be now on the debit side. Yes. Uh, sorry, you said insurance account is it will be on which side? I think I don't. And you, you were coming around by saying that we are moving it to the profit and loss account. It's an expenditure yes. on its own. That means your profit and loss, it will be debited. And what is going to, to be the amount this time around, since we only got the, uh, the, the amount for the overpayment. So what is the amount here? All right. That's a very good question. And I'll come to that one. The credit, sorry, you credit your insurance. Okay, sorry. Insurance. So the amount will be? 800 rand. I think we, we mismatch our figures here. So this is where the 800 rand would be actually on on this side, the side, the the prepayment one, and uh, the prepayment there along with the insurance will be. We have to determine how much is the insurance for the whole year. So for you to determine the insurance for the whole, the whole year, okay. What you're going to do, you'd say 800 rand. Remember, it, it was overpaid by two months, which is January and February for the 30 period. So you just say 800 divided by two, which is equals to 400, right? And then you'd say for the full 12 months period, you'd say 400 multiplied by full 12 months. Uh, anybody quickly who can help me with how much they are? 1,800. 
is it 4008? So this is where you're going to put this amount. Sorry, I think that's where we made the mistakes. 4800 is actually for the prepayment, and we're going to credit the insurance itself in question because it has decreased for the, for the, for the, for the current financial period. So remember, insurance is actually, this insurance is actually for the current year. It's an expense, all right? So because we paid actually the insurance for the current year, we don't own anything that will result in actually a decrease. Then it will come on the credit side with an amount of 4,800. Okay, so you bring the principal back together to say that, uh, Keen, I don't know if you've seen that under your, 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 your readings, but when you do the adjustment entries, we are reversing actually. The expenses goes through to the credit side and the liabilities come back to the debit side along with your, what do you call it? The incomes, incomes, equities, and liabilities. When you're doing an adjustment, actually, it's more like you're reversing. So you do a miss, I don't know if I can call it a cross-reference or the mismatch. Is it My understanding was that there is an amount that was paid for the year for insurance. So let's say for the 12 months, we paid 4,800. Yes. But now we are saying that there was an overpayment of 800 rand. That, that is for two months, the month of January and February. So right. initially, we paid 4,800 plus 800. That's so good. now we are trying to remove those extra 800 from the insurance account that had the registered for like four five thousand so, six hundred. Sorry, I didn't get you. I didn't get you there. Yes, I was saying that. I uh, my understanding was that we paid for twelve months. That is four thousand and eight hundred plus yes. the other eight hundred that were supposed to be for the month of January and February of the following year. So yes. when we are doing our adjustment. Yes. And we are now reverse, kind of reversing, the, okay, reducing the account of insurance. The amount there for the prepayment and insurance is it not supposed to be eight hundred? Because that is how the that is how much the account, the insurance account, is going to reduce. All right. Uh, no, I, I get what you're saying. Remember, the the main account here is the insurance, which is actually for the current current year. But what is the contract? Look, I think we are bringing the double entry, uh, the double entry accounting here. What is the contract allocation account for the insurance? In this instance, it's prepayment because just... Yes, this is actually sitting here because of it's a contract allocation account. It doesn't mean that it's, the contract allocation account is actually what's holding the first link. Obviously, the insurance was actually paid with a prepayment. It does not necessarily mean that we do record the prepayment in the current year. But the, the insurance amount that we have paid is actually including what's called the prepayment, right? We paid 4,800 rand, but inclusive of 800 rand on top of it, that makes it 5,600 rand. Yes. Okay. So, if there's an overpayment of an insurance, which we call it a prepayment, if you are recording the uh, the insurance, what would be your contract allocation account in terms of expenses? At the time of the adjustment or at the time of the initial payment? The, the time of the adjustments, when you're adjusting. By the if time of the initial payment, the bank would be affected because it was just the cash payment. But when we are recording yes. adjustments, that's when we're looking at which one is actually the contract allocation account. Okay. Let's say your your depreciation, your depreciation in the current year is uh, it's forty thousand rand. So to understand in terms of the principles, what was what is going to be your contract allocation account? Accumulated um, depreciation. The accumulated depreciation would be that right yes exactly my point sure you're doing the the adjustment recording at the current in, in, at the end of the year right when you do the journal 
with regards to that. How you go, how are you going to record that? Remember the accumulated depreciation. It comes from the depreciation in the previous accounting cycle. Yes. So when you do, when you record your adjustments at the end of the financial period, how are you going to record that? I thought you just said that it's going to be depreciation on the debit and accumulated depreciation on the credit. Is that yep. what you're asking for? When, when you are doing the adjustments, the question is how are you going to record that? Because you have identified what the contra allocation account is. Do we yes. agree with that one? But when you, when, when you do that necessary adjustment at the end of the year, are you still going to say my depreciation is going to be on the debit side and my accumulated depreciation will be created? I don't know. You're going to reverse the two when you do the adjustments. You're going to mismatch them. It means that your accumulated depreciation will be on the debit side and then you bring your depreciation on the credit side. Okay, okay. That is the closing transfer you are talking about. Oh. Yes. No, that, that's actually the recording adjustment at the end of the period. Remember, you are dealing, here we are dealing with the prepayment, but there you are dealing with I don't know if I, I can't say that prepay, uh, the prepayment on the depreciation. That is the reason why I was a bit conf uh, I was I got stuck when we came to the closing transfer because I felt like we didn't have enough information as to how much was was actually paid for the year because I, the 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 amount that we use for the closing transfer cannot be the same as the one we use for the adjustment. Hence, you did all the calculations and everything, but then. I, I I thought that the amount for the prepayment that was going to be recorded at the uh, on the adjustments was going to be the actual overpayment that is 800 and now for the closing transfer perhaps we were supposed to put the full amount as in 5600 or I don't I don't know or 4800 I don't know Actually, or the, your understanding is the 4,800 was supposed to be part of the closing transfer. Is that what you're saying? I think so. I'm not so sure. You see, we are struggling with this thing, so I'm just hoping that I will get a clear understanding. Thanks. Okay. No, the, I think maybe you are just confused about the wording of the prepayment here. And what I'm trying to explain here with the prepayment it is just a contra allocation account. It does not necessarily mean that it is actually a prepayment account. This is actually the one that has been prepaid. Okay, would it make sense if I can say my prepayment is bank? Oh, sorry, my contra allocation account is bank. Crystal? Prepayment is fine. If I say bank? It won't make sense. Why does it not make sense? Because it's a prepayment, <laughs> so I understand the prepayment part. So, but if I can argue with you and say that the prepayment is actually coming from the bank account of the business, it was not actually a credit payment, it was a cash payment. Yes. Would you agree with me? Yes, I do. Okay, let me tell you something. This prepayment, do you know that it's actually equivalent to the cash and cash equivalents? Yes, it, okay, it, it falls under the same category on the statement of financial position, so yes. I agree with that. But then why, when I say that, if I can say my prepayment is a bank, do you have a problem with it? No, I don't. It's just that I don't think it's the same thing here. <laughs> no, you say that it doesn't make sense. But now, because of, I take you to the statement of financial position, you understand that your prepayment is part of your bank, then that's why it makes sense to you. Yeah, uh, let me just check. I think I just have to refer you to the theory. In, uh, it says that it's unfortunate your, your study guide is actually not the same as, 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 uh, as mine. All right, but let's go your way. You said under the recording adjustment, you put 4,800 rent as, okay, let's, let's see what you say. What do you want to put in here? Crystal? On the adjustment, I wanted to put the, 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 the entry, the accounting entry is fine. Debit is prepayment, insurance is on the credit, but then the amount, I think it's 800. Oh, what you're saying is here it has to be 800. Yes. 
and then here it has to be 800 as well. And then this yes. way you say 4,800 rand. They are not so sure that the amount is not the same as the between. The difference is 4,800 to make it to 5,600 rand. Okay, I am actually asking a question. I'm really not sure what is supposed to happen here. <laughs> so please help us. Okay. Now, uh, what Christelle is actually uh, querying to to to, uh, I'll try to get hold of my lecture as well, my primary lecture for this for this for this um, kind of a scenario. What what Christelle is saying is saying that on the, the the whole recording process of the debit and the credit for the prepayment, it's okay, but for 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 Christelle, the amount has to be eight hundred rand. And for the insurance has to be, you said 800, right? Yeah. But under the closing transfer, that's where she's getting confused. She doesn't know how much of the amount should go in here. But the recording procedure, despite the figures, she's fine with that part. She's just confused about the amount. Actually, she understands the prepayment amount has to go in here. Okay, Crystal. Please carry on on this one. What do you do again here? What's your what's your ledger account going to look like? I think um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I have to look at my notes, otherwise I won't know what. I'm going to open up the ledger accounts for the insurance account along with your prepayments. And you're going to have your profit and loss account. Anybody who wants to help, Crystal? What? Uh, you're going to have what's called, sorry, I can't show you guys the, 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 the what do you call it? The T account. So the 5,600 rand would fall under your debit side because we're going to combine the amount of that prepayment along with the current year insurance. And then we're going to build it together. It is actually for the insurance. What your credit side would be? You're going to have uh, prepayments. You're going to have your loss. And uh, prepayments, you're going to have the uh, insurance. And uh, you're going to have your profit and loss, and the insurance itself. Payment, which is the contract allocation account for your insurance, it will be an amount of uh, 1800 rand. Then you bring your profit and loss here with an amount of 800 rand. Sorry. And then you're going to Okay, and then uh, in the prepayments, your contract allocation account is 2000 rand. That's actually for the insurance. And then you bring your. Then you bring the 800. Uh, Crystal, this is what I'm going to do now. Uh, 
I'm trying. I'm going to try and email um, Nashma. She's actually my primary, my primary lecturer. I think maybe she would give me a better explanation that I can bring it to the class on Saturday. Should she respond before time on this one? Right. But if you were given this kind of a question in the exam, how are you going to reckon that? How are you going to? Let's say they were looking for all of this. All right, let's have a look at number two there. It says that on a close examination, it was established that Putin limited water and lines account has not yet been paid for September to December in the current year with an amount of 1,800 grand. Okay, then uh, we're going to identify that as uh, accrued expense. I'm sure you'd agree with me then. Everybody happy? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. And uh, let's see how you go into the recording part. Let's see. Caleb, how was your how would your recording part be look like? So first we would need to work out oh an amount to 1,800. So we would actually need to credit our liabilities. Yes, the current, uh, current as expense. trade and other payables. That's correct. And we would need to Credit. No, it's not credit expenses. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to look through my notes so I can really try and answer this properly. What right, uh, adjustment journal? Adjustment journal would be our um, water and lights account. Water and lights account. So it's going to be what? Debit or credit? We would need to credit it. Really bad. Is that not because debit would mean that we actually paid it off? Mm. Shouldn't we debit their water because they are increasing the water, the water and lights account? Yes, what are you, who is talking now? Is it Kayla still? No, no, this is no, RT. Sir. Yeah, water and lights uh, has to be debited. Yeah, shouldn't we debit it with the amount 1.8 by four months? Because we're owing for four months. Uh, so yeah, it is actually for, so you'd say 1.8 divided by four, right? By times four. Uh, for the, no, the amount, no, it has to be divided by four because for the whole four months it's 1.8, not much of that. Oh, for the, the four months it's 1.8, oh, okay. Yeah. So it will be, uh, sorry, 1.8 divided by 4. How much is it? 450. 150. So, Ati, what, what's going to be your credit contract allocation? What's your entry account? Contract account? Uh, is it not accrued expense? Is a good expense. Thank you. It's it will be the same amount, four hundred and fifty, right? Yes. Okay. So your closing transfer would be like what? Closing transfer. I I don't know that. I don't know that part. Can someone else assist? to be the reverse of this one but with a profit and loss account meaning that your debit will be your profit and loss let me just say p and l that i should keep here now so your credit will be and it will be my water and lights The question is how much is the amount? 
How much is the amount is going to be determined by this? What you're going to say is, your monthly installment is 450, so it means that it's going to be 450, and then you multiply this by 12. Is it a crew, right? So you're going to be 450, not by 12, my apologies. We multiply by, uh, how much is 12 minus 4? 8, right? That's your remaining month. That's actually be the amount that you have paid for. Let me just make sure that I, yeah, in the current year with an amount of 1,800. So it's September, October, November, December, that's four months accrued. And then the remaining months is actually uh, eight. So you'd say 450 multiplied by eight. How much is 450 of eight? Somebody quickly help me there. Anybody quickly? Uh, 450, it's 3.6. 3.6. Okay. And Sorry, this should be on. Okay, I'll put the debit. 3.6 in all sides. And uh, ledger accounts. Ledger accounts you've got. I'm going to give you a hint. Water and lights. Second ledger account will be in a crude. And uh, the third ledger will be the profit and loss. Then how do you record that? Water light is actually an expense. It increases on your debit side. And how much will be the amount? It's say opening balance or balance brought down, but however you want to put it. And six, and then you're going to have What else are you going to have? You need to balance it all together for the whole year, then you're going to have your crew. Uh, 450. You made a mistake, I'm supposed to see a debit. Sorry. So you're going to credit what's called the PL. I didn't make a mistake here. Uh, okay. So debit of this and so how much is uh, three sixty? Wait, wait a minute. Basically, it should be 1.8 here, so. Uh, let me see, just a moment. You debit your accrued with an amount of 450, 450 is a month, so it can be with an amount of 1.8. And uh, so you credit 5,000. 400 rand, I think that's it. So that's your profit and loss account. Okay. So your accrued expense, how much is your liability? Your contract allocation account will be your credit, what and lights. One point eight. And your profit and loss. It will be the same with water. What and lives? You paid how much? Three point six. Right, and I think on the first question, I made a mistake by not uh, showing where the prepayment goes. Anyways, here uh, this is what Kayla said. Said the statement. Good. They pay votes. All right. 
Any questions? Any questions? So here you were supposed to say statement. Position. Prepayment. Actually, it's a cash. It's a bank. Is the prepayment should be eight hundred. Okay, let me go back to you. Any questions? Everybody, fine. Can I move on? All right, the transactions it says on the 31st of December 2022, Putin Limited account shows that the inventory worth of uh, 12,000 rand was purchased during the current financial period. And on a close examination, it was determined that 21,000 worth of the, the inventory is uh, still on hand. Okay, so you can see that uh, we have determined what's called the current year inventory. To read. Okay, so the opening inventory is a uh, thousand rand, and then the closing entry meaning that all the total inventory that we had. That was 12,000 rand. On our closing, we had the inventory uh, that is left with an amount of, uh, what do you call it, uh, 1,000 rand. So in this instance, you can still have uh, your cost of sales. This is how you determine your cost of sales with an amount of 11,000. Heading up information on how to uh, statement of uh, the profit and loss. So there. Uh, anybody quickly who can help us there? Adjustment. So we've got inventory the yeah, end we how much one thousand rent in my contract location account it depends on what kind of uh, let me just say in my inventory was uh, Calculators. Let's say calculator. It's stationary. So you're going to have my. This is actually on the debit side, sorry. And you're going to have. Is a. Uh, Right, closing transfer would look like this. How would the closing transfer look like? With a loss. Remember, it can be an asset account, it can be a, an income statement account. Okay. So the reverse of that would have your stationary. How much would be the amount? How much is the amount? Cost of sales, right? So you are actually going to have 10,000. And under your stationary, you're going to have 11,000 as well.
Okay, I'm gonna move on to my manager accounts. First one, it's inventory and the stationery. And then the second one is going to be the end or whatever that the inventory that you can, you can actually call it. Okay, so how do you record that? Kayla, do you have an idea? Kayla? Actually, this I is think so. Now I have this an idea of how to do it. I'm trying to do the next question. Okay, no problem. Let me just help you with it <laughs> because time is actually running out. Then you're going to have yeah. debit of the opening. It should result with an amount of 11,000 rand inventory. Okay, that's actually on the debit side. And uh, the one that is actually left at uh, what is it the year end it's from how much 11,000 okay um, left stock Okay. Okay, then we're going to look at the inventory at the year end. This one is the one that is going to be transferred into your balance sheet. How much is that? It's a thousand rand, right? And your PL account is actually going to be. Any questions? Any questions? It's a bit confusing, I know. You need more time on that one, so I don't blame you for that. Let's come back uh, to you. Any questions? Right, let, just, let me just try and move on to the next one. Fuji Limited rental income and amount, uh, amount shows 13,000 rand as the rented part of the building about SA for its administration. It means that we had uh, a bigger block and then we decided that we have to rent it out to World South Africa for their own administration part. Okay. So the rental income shows an amount of these. They, if they have actually rented uh, a part of that building to board as an administration. Equally, this question is actually not complete. Uh, it was supposed to be the rental income that has been received in advance. Okay. All right, let's say the rental income. I just I just want to check something. Okay, rental income is 18,000 rent. And uh, the amount of Mm, let's say an amount of 3,000 rent has been received. So, January and February. OK, 
Okay. Okay, so let's look at uh, adjustment transfer. Transfers. Anybody quickly? Who wants to assist? Who wants to help me? What right, are you going to have? Your rental income. Wait. Debit. Rental income. Credit will be. Sorry, my apologies. Uh, don't disappear. Do not disappear on me. Crystal. Crystal? Yes, sir. Yeah, no, I think you seem to be correct with the, the first the first transition. I thought you would question this one as to why am I doing it this way? Not different detail. Mm. Can you see why am I saying that? Oh. Uh? Yes, sir. Yeah, but I have to I have to get to hold of Leshma unless if uh, their principles are actually not quite correct. But I have to I'll confirm that with you on uh, on Saturday when we meet. Okay, it's three thousand rents and uh, you are now going to have closing transfers. In your closing transfers, how is it going to look like? How is it? How different is it going to look like? How is it going to look like? Remember, we are reversing. So you're going to have uh, your debit on the rental, and then your credit will be probably your profit and loss. Okay, let's see, it's 13,000. This is going to be your, uh, part of your closing transfers, all right? And your ledger accounts look like you're going to have what's called the rental income. And you're going to have the income receipt. Okay, and then the last one will be. So you're going to have your, remember it's an income, it increases on the credit side. So your opening balance, which is your balance brought down. So balance brought down. So you 
we're going to look at the the contract allocation account for that one. It's going to be the debit. That's basically your income received in advance. So I, I, I don't want to have it long because it might over exceed the the what do you call it? Uh, but anyway, nonetheless, it's three thousand rents. It's on the debit side. Eight thousand rent, and my credit is bigger than my debit. Then I'm going to have what's called the covenant loss. So the difference would be ten thousand rent. So it should give you a total figure of. Uh, So my debit side will be 3,000 plus 10,000. It will give me like 15,000 rand. My credit side is a pure uh, 15,000 rand. Okay, so I've got the rental income received in advance. My contra allocation account should be rental income. Side, credit side, because rental income is actually part of your trade and other payables. It's a liability. So. The amount should be 3,000 rands. Provident loss account, that's actually how much of the amount we just got through to this side. But you need to put this under your credit side simply because this is actually an income. Then your contract allocation would be the rental income as well, the amount. So then this shop, uh, you'd say statement of uh, financial position. Then you'd say, sorry, pay payables, save. Everybody happy here? The amount would be 3,000 rands. Um, I think this amount, this transaction is actually the same or more similar as uh, the income of company period. We're now at number five. It says Putin Limited Commission income shows an amount of uh, 1,600 rand. We must determine that in December the amount has not yet been received with an, with an amount of 100 rand. How do we understand this transaction? Only if I was uh, actually denying myself here or what's going on. Understanding of this transaction, Putin Limited Commission amount shows an amount of uh, commission shows an amount of 1,600 rand. It was determined that in December the amount has not yet been received. So this is an accrued income, right? I don't think we did this. Income is an amount that is actually due to Putty Limited. The recognition will be accrued income. And uh, adjustment 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 channel using mm. transfers. Uh, I think I've been on uh, to you for, for a while. Tembi, do you want to give it a try on this one? Tembi? Hi there, sir. It's Kayla here. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Kayla? 
I'm good, thank you. So I know it says accrued income. So our accounts affected, would it not be we would debit our accrued income, credit mm -hmm. our um, um, accumulated income, and then the type of accounts would be the asset that would increase, the income would increase, and it <laughs> would affect the financial <laughs> statement of fin the financial statements for the debit side and then the credit side, our interest that has been, uh, our, um, um, the money that has been accumulated, the accumulated receivings would affect the statement of profit and loss. Okay, okay now how are you going to record that? You gave me the debit okay. of income and uh, the credit being the commission income. Okay. So the amount would be how much? The amount would be, we would show that we received 1,600. Is it, is it an accrued income? But the accrued income would be for 400 because that's all that's missing. Okay, so the same would actually go as part of your commission income. This is the name of the account actually. Closing transfers, how are you going to record that? The closing transfer would be 400. Um, it would be 400 in accrued income and 600 of 1,400 in received income. Uh, sorry, Kayla, I didn't get that. Please give would me it not, sorry, would it not be 400 in accrued income and 1,600 in received income? Uh, are we talking about the closing transfers now? Yes. Give me that. Income. I think so. Income is how much? The commission income was one thousand six hundred. No, it was four hundred. One hundred. And the profit and loss was four hundred because 100. we're only doing the adjustment for the four hundred. Right, so apparently it's going to be the opposite way. The commission income will be an amount of 1.6 and then you're probably going to be under the commission. Okay. It's going to be 1.6. Identity in terms of the ledger accounts. Let's start with the commission income. We're debiting. Uh, yes, we are debiting the credit. income yeah. received in advance. No, we should we should actually debit the opening balance. Okay. Which is one thousand six hundred. I don't know that that's as far as what I with you guys. So it's a uh, opening balance. <laughs> opening balance. I'm just trying my best to understand me, so I'm like, I'm gonna be honest with you. This is my first ever swing at accounting. And you know it's it's quite daunting. No, that's fine. We're on the same page at the end of the day. Don't worry. So you're also going to have what's called accrued on the credit side. Yes. Good income from the credit side with an amount of how much? Four hundred, right? Yes. You debit what? Probably loss. of how much? 2,000. So this is how you're going to actually balance it. So these two are going to balance each other to make okay. it 2,000 then, and this is going to be a separate account. So, but you have to look at your debit and the credit. How they, what do they do now? Okay. Fine. Yes. All right, let's have the accrued income as, accrued uh, income. Do it. All right. Crude income. So the contract allocation account for crude income is what? You just debit your commission income, right? Uh, just a moment. Commission income. 
So the commission income is an amount of, uh, sorry, the accrued amount, because commission is just the contract allocation account. It should be four. In loss account, this is actually the last one under this. Over in loss account. But the provident loss account, what are we having? We would say 2000, would we not? We would say it was a credit of 1600 and a debit of 400, and that would be a total of 2000. We would just debit the commission income. I think. Okay, or you can just do it uh, separately as a provident loss. 1.6 at the end of the day is going to give you the same amount and then you create it again. Uh, accrued income. Still the same one. But remember, it's an income that is actually due in the current year, so we have to include it in pair as part of our financial statements, whether you have received it or not. Okay. Right. Any questions before I move on to the last, second last one? Not from my side. Okay. Crystal, are you still there? Is Crystal here? She's very quiet. Crystal? Bongi? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. All right. Are you, are you following now? Then? Yes, I am. All right. Nice no, one. Bongi? Bongi, are you, are you following? Are you following my guest? Yes, I am. All right. Contio, Contio, I hope I'm pronouncing your saying quite, quite right. Yes, yes, I'm following. All right. Jesse, you never, you never spoke in this class. Are you following? Yes, I'm following, sir. Thank you very much, Jesse. Tembi, are you winning? Uh, All right. Nomaswazi, are you there? Rambedi. Rambedi. I'm here, yes, sir. I'm here. I'm following. No, that's good. Do you know this journal is called Big Rambedi? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I thought you'd say, yeah, he's my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Again, as well, Stuart Baxter is one of our one of our debtors, actually, and then he was actually declared or determined to be insolvent, and he still owes us an amount of money. I'm just going to be very quick on this one because uh, Tim says that I'm left with five minutes, but I think it will allow me to can go ahead, right? Um, the general journal will be actually because it's a general journal account. We won't require the closing transfers. So you're going to have the credit losses. The credit loss is actually a debit account. So it's an expense, so it's going to be debited. And then we're going to look at uh, how much is the amount that uh, Stuart Baxter is insolvent with. So Stuart Buckster is determined to be insolvent with an amount of three. So what will be my the credit allocation contract account? That will be the trade and other receivables control account. Or you can just say trade debtors. The debtors. And then you can just show that it's even Steve Buckster, Stuart Buckster, sorry. Next up, on the credit side, and then the 15. Okay. So the closing transfer, I beg your pardon? Question, what is trade debt or is it not trade receivable? It's actually the same thing, but because of space and time, that's what I'm saying. Just oh, saying. Okay. Yeah, just, yeah. But it's so actually. Let's use the stretch. So. 
So you can still say trade another receiver, but let me just put it here so that I wouldn't be blamed. Receivables. That's your trade letter. So, but I think this is the correct way of uh, writing it down. So we are going to have the closing transfer on this one. Looking at uh, the debit side, remember it's a provident loss account, it's an expense. For the same amount of 350. And uh, you are going to credit the credit loss. Yeah. Uh, is that contra allocation account? This one is actually not complicated. We just uh, put the figures as they are. It doesn't require that much. As such. Okay. So your ledger account, I'm just going to explain in a little bit of detail. You just look at this thing. Your ledger account is going to be the same amount. Uh, somebody's actually, can you all be on mute? Please mute yourself. I'm not sure. I can't hear. Can you hear me? Can I be here? Okay, yes, we hear you. Okay. We hear you. That's fine. That thing is actually gone. So the credit losses being uh, for Stuart Baxter, obviously the trade receipt loss control account is going to be the asset account under that expenditure T account with an amount of 350. And then you're going to credit your profit and loss account with the same amount. So the profit and loss account because credit loss is an expense. So you're going to have the profit and loss account, T account, and then you're going to have a debit amount of your credit losses with an amount of 230. And then you're going to have trade receivables control account. Okay, that's that. An asset, you're going to look at, do you have an opening balance on it? If no, then you just leave it as it is. But you need to deduct that specific data out of the trade receivables control account. By deducting that, it means that you have to decrease that. It's going to go through on your credit side, that amount of 350 because this person is written off as in so meaning that in our books, he does not exist anymore. Right. So uh, you remember, remember with uh, credit losses, when we identify it as a credit losses, it means that we only carry the expenditure part of that. And uh, when you identify it as an insolvent, obviously we have to take you out of the box. And uh, the, the, when we take you out of our box, it means that we're going to put you on the debit side of the trade and other receivables control account. So we have time, I think, to reach there, and then you will be able to see that. So it's going to go on the trade side of the trade and other receivables control account. Transaction number seven is quite easy. Asset vehicle owned by Putin Limited had a depreciation amount of 15,000 rand for the current year. Okay, so this one in regards to the journals, you're just going to have your depreciation on the debit side uh, with an amount of 15,000, and then the credit side would reflect the accumulated depreciation with the same amount, right? And uh, with regards to the Closing transfers there. Obviously, you're going to have a profit and loss account because the depreciation is a profit and loss account, and you're going to have the depreciation as a contract allocation account. Okay. And then the T account, you are obviously going to have the depreciation, and then you're going to have the accumulated depreciation as a contract allocation account, debit with 15,000 rand, and then you're going to open the accumulated depreciation. You're going to put the depreciation itself on the credit side. With an amount of 15,000 rand, and then you're going to disclose this and then your statement of profit and loss as an expenditure with an amount of 15,000 rand. And that will be the end of it for me today. Right, before I tell you what's going to come up on Saturday, are there any questions here? Any questions? No, no questions. I don't have it. Okay, no problem. Uh, Saturday, I'm going to summarize you to pick, uh, I think it's D, 
that deals with the create another payables control account. And then I'm going to do a specific questions with regards to the depreciation. Okay. So the question I would have a specific, uh, I'm going to have maybe one or two questions under each and every method, cost, reducing balance method, and the production unit method. So I'm just going to have two questions and then we treat them separately. We're going to have a realization account for the disposals. We just have to know how to do that, but I'll try to bring two as well. So that's actually what we are actually going to focus on. And uh, unfortunately, we don't have time. I was going to bring up the Excel spreadsheet for the PPE so that we can do the load of property planting equipment. But the determination there, you just have to determine how much is the carrying value of an asset total, how much is the carrying total value of the asset. And then you take it to the statement of financial position. So that's actually in a nutshell.